I tell you what, it is absolutely boiling hot here in England today. It is up to 33 degrees, which is absolutely mental. Look at this, 31 degrees. Welcome back to the channel guys and welcome back to yet another video. Today's video we are going back to Nepal but I will be talking about trekking so today's video is going to be all about the top five treks that you can do in Nepal. So I always think it's important before you start a video like this where you're giving advice that you actually tell the people, you guys, that yes, I actually have trekked in Nepal. Thankfully, before the lockdown uh, and the coronavirus completely shut down the world, I managed to do three amazing treks in Nepal, which were the Langtang Valley trek, the Mardi Himal trek, and the Annapurna Base Camp trek. However, only two of them are in this top five. So what I've done to make this a little simpler and uh, put my own twist on it, I kind of guess you could say that, I have decided to rate each trek with three categories. The categories are popularity, difficulty of the trek, and the scenery and landscape, because then I think that narrows it down to three simple things that I think most people really want to know about each trek. So guys, let's jump into it. Here are the top five treks that you can do in Nepal. So I'm gonna start with the first trek that I actually did in Nepal, and my first trek ever in my life, actually. The first time I ever walked eight hours plus, or actually ever experienced high altitude of over 3,000, 4,000 meters. So this trek was the Langtang Valley trek. This is a very well-known popular trek that you can do in Nepal. It's great for all abilities. Personally, myself, I did this trek in seven days. It was for sure one of the highlights of my trip in Nepal because that was the first time I'd really experienced that pure adventure, the high altitude, the freedom that the mountains give you. So the starting point of this trek is a little village called Saya Brubesi, which is only a six to eight hour bus journey away from Kathmandu, which makes it really accessible and uh, you know a nice easy journey sometimes. That depends if you're like me and you have a woman breastfeeding next to you or you have a goat taking a piss on the floor next to you and also chickens I think were on the roof. Another great thing about this trek is the fact that once you get to the highest village which is Kaijun Gumpa which sits at an altitude of just under 3,900 meters is the fact that you have many day hikes that you can start from from that village. So Kaijun Gumpa is a great starting point to then go to Kaijun Ri, which will take you to over 4,000 meters. And then if you want to go even higher to the day trek that I did, which was called Serko Ri, that will take you to 4,500 meters. And that was absolutely incredible. Unfortunately, we couldn't get all of the way up because of the amount of snow. And it also started to get a little bit dangerous because I didn't have crampons. If you haven't checked out my uh, series on trekking in Nepal, then make sure you do that because I've made three trekking series on uh, the Langtang Valley, Mardi Himal and Annapurna Base Camp. So I have rated this trek out of popularity, a four star because it is a popular trek and uh, lots of people know about it. Difficulty wise, I have given it a three star. Um, I don't think it's the most difficult trek. I definitely made it harder for myself because I packed far too much in my bag. So make sure if you do this trek, you don't pack too much for God's sake because weight is king. And the scenery and the landscape, I've actually given a three star. So that is the first trek that I would recommend you looking into and that is the Langtang Valley trek. Okay, so the second trek that I would recommend is actually the second trek that I did. It is the Mardi Himal trek. Now this is a trek in a completely different area to uh, the one we just talked about. This one is closer to Pokhara and this is in the Annapurna mountain range, which is obviously world famous for having some of the highest mountains in the world. Again, this trek is great for all abilities. This is the trek that I probably found the easiest and the shortest duration. That is one of the main reasons why I decided to do this trek because I knew I could probably get it done anywhere from between four days to seven days. You start this trek at a village called Kande or Kade where you need to go from Pokhara to the bus station and then you'll get a local bus to that uh, first village. And then the highest point on this trek is the Mardi Himal base camp. But once again, unfortunately, I couldn't get there just because there was so much snow coming down and uh, you know it would have been pretty dangerous. The great and amazing thing about this trek is the fact that it's a ridge trek and you're actually walking towards you know a mountain which almost feels like it's touching distance which is, I'll try and pronounce it in Nepalese, but I'll probably say it wrong, Machapuchare, which is also known in English as Fishtail Mountain. This is by far my favorite mountain I've ever seen. I think it's so beautiful and aesthetic. The way it looks, absolutely incredible. So the highlights for me about this trek, 
Firstly is the fact that it's a gradual incline each day. Each day you shouldn't really hike more than 500 meters in altitude, which makes it quite nice and the fact that you don't feel out of breath all the time because you have time to adjust to the incline. So lastly, one of the great things and the benefits of doing this trek is the fact that it can be linked and combined with other treks around. So for example, the Annapurna Base Camp or the Annapurna Circuit. If the Mardi Himal trek wasn't long enough for you and you wanted to continue trekking, then you could go and link on with one of those other two treks and carry on trekking. So ratings wise, I have given this trek a three star for popularity because I don't think it's the most well-known popular trek there is in Nepal. For some reason, I hadn't even heard of it before I arrived into the country. Difficulty wise, as I said, this one is fairly easy. So I gave it a two star and the scenery and landscape, I actually gave a four star just because of that beautiful fishtail matcha puchari. Okay, so trek number three that I would recommend you do in Nepal is the Annapurna circuit. Now, this was one of the main reasons why I wanted to come to Nepal to do that trek. But because of the lockdown, because of the coronavirus, I wasn't able to, so I was gutted not to do it, but obviously so grateful and thankful that I managed to still do three treks before. The Annapurna circuit is probably one of the most well-known treks that you can do in Nepal. It's up there with uh, Everest Base Camp, for example, in terms of popularity, but I think that's for a reason, because it does have the highest lake in the world, the highest pass, which is Tharongla Pass in the world, so those are obviously key interests for people as to why they want to do that trek. I think Another reason is also because this trek is very adventurous. It takes between 12 to 18 days or, you know, even longer if you like. I have heard a few negative comments about this trek. The fact that now apparently there are roads being built uh, at the lower villages just to make the trek more accessible for more tourists and foreigners or trekkers in general. This obviously sucks a bit because it kind of takes away from the, the nature and the views and, you know, what you can experience on the trek itself. But I've also heard a person told me that uh, you can take these uh, side paths or side routes that will take you off the main road, which is obviously much nicer. So if anyone watching has actually done the Annapurna circuit, please drop a comment down below and uh, let us all know what is the Annapurna circuit really like. So the highlights for this trek is the fact that it has the world's highest lake, which is actually one of the main reasons why I wanted to do it. The lake is called Calicho Lake, but it's not always open year round. So make sure that you check that online because uh, obviously the lake is frozen and a lot of the people that live in the village go home in the winter because it's too cold and there's too much snow. So ratings wise, I have given this a four star for popularity a four star for difficulty because this one does take you high, the Rongla Pass, 5,400 meters, pretty damn high. And the scenery and landscape also gets a four star from me. But as I said, hopefully in the future, I'll actually be able to go back and do this trek and give you my own proper experience. So jumping into the fourth trek that I would recommend you do in Nepal, and that is the Manaslu circuit. Now online, quote unquote, this is one of the greatest off the beaten treks in Nepal. Now, if that doesn't excite you, then I don't know what does because that makes me want to go there and do it straight away. I read an article on a website when I was researching about this trek and it said that the Manaslu circuit will most likely overtake the Annapurna circuit and the Everest base camp in terms of popularity, which is insane because it basically shows us that we should be doing this trek right now before it gets too popular. This trek for sure is up and coming as uh, the region was only opened in the 90s and they do have quite a few restrictions in terms of the permits and everything. So it is a little bit more restricted and you do need a minimum of two people doing this trek. You can't just go as a solo trekker and do it yourself. So that obviously shows that the level of risk is quite high and it might be a bit more of an advanced adventurous trek. But if you're looking for a less touristy trek, a more off the beaten secluded trek, then for sure this would be the one to go for. So ratings wise, I have given this one a two for popularity because as I said, it's not well known really at all, but I would 100% want to go back and do this trek straight away. Difficulty wise, I have given it a four and scenery and landscape also a four. Obviously, I've shown pictures and videos on the screen as I'm talking, so uh, let me know in the comments what do you guys think of the look of this trek. Now, jumping into number five, the last trek that I would recommend you do in Nepal. Actually, not the last one. There are so many I would recommend, but my top five for you. And number five, the last one is the Upper Mustang Trek. This trek looks absolutely surreal. It looks like a desert mountainous 
Himalayan range. Of course I could be wrong but take a look at some of these pictures, look at the desert like dry lands that it seems that you can be trekking through. Again with this trek you will experience more of the Tibetan style culture as you head towards more of the east of Nepal and get closer to the border with Tibet. So I think with this trek, not only will you experience a completely different landscape and scenery, you will experience a real authentic Tibetan culture. This trek takes anywhere between 10 to 16 days. So it's probably again, more suited towards the more intermediate advanced trekkers looking for real adventure. Now I did read this online about this trek that the local government has imposed very strict policies and expensive fees to limit the entry of the outside world to this secret kingdom in Nepal. Therefore, this place is not very well known to many tourists and very much less traveled. This trek is in a restricted area in Nepal, which means unfortunately the permits are a lot more expensive. I read online that it's like 500 US dollars for the trekking permit, which is, you know, crazy. But as you can see from the landscapes, if you're into that kind of stuff, then for sure it might be worth it for you. When I go back to Nepal in the future, that will be one to do on the bucket list. So the ratings for this trek that I have given is one star for popularity because as I said, it's restricted, it's not very well known. Four for difficulty because of the duration and probably the fact that you're walking through this desert-like terrain may be a bit difficult for some people. And the landscapes and scenery, again, a four star because of this dry, arid, arid's not even a word. It looks like an awesome trek anyway, so I think you should go and do it. So those are my top five treks that I would recommend you go and do in Nepal. As I said in the beginning, these are just my opinions. I haven't done all five treks, so disclaimer, 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 but hopefully I can in the future. I did my research for you guys so that you don't have to, or you can now take the ideas and the information from this video and go and look into them into more detail. I know after talking about trekking and looking at all the pictures that I can't wait to head back to Nepal and continue trekking because that's one of the main reasons why I wanted to go there to really go and experience some real life adventure. If you enjoyed today's video or found it helpful, please make sure to give it a like and subscribe if you are new to the channel because plenty more vlogs, plenty more travel advice and just general travel videos to make in the future. Thank you so much for watching and as always guys, stay safe, stay positive and see you on the mountain.